Singapore has become so intimidating. <laughs> Hyper souped up city. I don't think I can survive <laughs> this. The tally's away, borders are open. It's time to go to Singapore to see my folks and to eat some great food. It's been almost a full year in Bali with lots of amazing memories. We'll just be away for a short time, but it feels super cool to be on the road again. Oh my god, Singapore! <laughs> This is so Singapore. Like, the first thing you see when you step off the plane is a wholesome brand of goods names. <laughs> Hugo Boss, Coach and everything. We head straight to a hipster kopitiam. A traditional coffee shop with food. It's pretty hot. <laughs> right, so I've met my folks. It's been wonderful just to see them again. It's been two years of separation. I absolutely ecstatic and uh, first stop immediately from the airport uh, we're here we're gonna get some Hokkien mee the food culture in Singapore is amazingly varied <laughs> It's my kind of a welcome back to Singapore. This is what the Singapore heartlands look like. Orderly, dynamic, you got hipster cafes next to Chinese medicine, and of course, hawker centres selling all sorts of amazing Singaporean hawker fare. This is like my favourite Singaporean breakfast in recent years. That's a little um, rice dumpling uh, covered with uh, chi chong fan sauce and chi chong fan. So good! <laughs> Singaporean food culture. We love our food, so we'll happily stand in line for over an hour to buy something yummy to eat. In this case, fishball noodles. With every bite that I take, I realize that I'm not just savoring like really, really awesome food from home. It's also like all the times that my family, my parents and I have had like happy meals here together, eating all the things that we like at this local centre. Super nice. This is also one of my favourite things. It is called Chai Chao Wei. The thing is, it just occurred to me that for, I don't know, our Western friends who are watching this video, you probably think that it looks like I'm eating a pile of bird crap <laughs> because it looks really really unappealing and not appetizing but this is actually really really good it's a cake made from dry corn white carrots so we call this carrot cake and then it's fried in a dark sauce sauce with like um, little garnishes, crispy things and it's a little bit sweet, a little bit crunchy very nice Totally doing the whole tourist in my own home country thing, but I'm absolutely loving it. Like taking a look at Singapore through the eyes of a tourist actually just makes me go wow. This definitely still feels like a hyper souped up city though. Like there's so much construction going on everywhere. Even or maybe especially in the far away suburban areas of Singapore now, you definitely feel this is a city in active transformation. But you know, it all kind of feels a little stiff, like everything's been so landscaped and urban planned within an inch of their lives, you know, it feels like I've, 
in a week here, I get to see a naturally occurring blade of grass, really. <laughs> So I'm presently sitting in the center of a green square, an artificially created patch of um, nature right in the center of Raffles Place, which is where all our CBD is centered around. It feels really different now, actually, like super rushy and stressy. Like, you know, the way people walk and talk and drive, they're like in such a rush to get somewhere. And it kind of makes me feel like I ought to be in a rush too, even though I'm not quite sure what for. <laughs> There's a scent of scarcity in the air here now, a scarcity of time and space, you know, <laughs> you feel like time and space here is just not enough. People are kind of like just jostling around. Thanks a lot. So cute. Seeing everyone living in such close quarters to each other, just in such a competitive environment, and with this vibe of scarcity in the air, all these factors combined, I think it's no wonder that people here might feel this really strong pressure to conform socially and perhaps even to one up each other at the cost of losing sight of maybe what's really important to oneself and losing sight of how you actually need to live your own truth instead of just following society's prescription. I feel a bit like an alien <laughs> going around here <laughs> because I understand everything that's going on around me. I understand the Singapore psychology. At the same time, because I've departed this place for coming up to a decade now, I feel like you know, I'm, I'm kind of irrelevant to this whole Singapore machinery, Singapore Inc. <laughs> Singapore has become so intimidating. <laughs> Hats off to everyone here who's just so uber productive, you know, working, commuting, entrepreneuring, having kids, cooking, doing housework, keeping fit all in one day. <laughs> I feel like I've been living away for too long at too chill a place. If I were to come back here right now, I don't think I can survive <laughs> this pace. But you know, at the same time, you see like the pace here has just gotten faster and faster and everybody here is keeping up, you know. It's like, you know, wherever the bar is set, people just kind of like, okay, that's the height, I'll jump to it. So I have a lot of respect as well for that resilience, that strength that people here display. I like everyone here, especially the aunties and uncles. They're always like, you know, super friendly, super like, you know, energetic. Very cool. I love, I love hearing the Singlish being spoken, that mix of English and Mandarin and a little bit of Malay words here and there. <laughs> I just also think that, unfortunately, most of the people around me kind of look like they could use a Bali vacation for a bit. Being outside Singapore, experiencing everything non-Singaporean has kind of only heightened my consciousness and appreciation, actually, for everything that is so Singaporean. You know, that particular Singapore combo of planning, efficiency, and productivity. <laughs> How everything is so meticulous and governed by the rule of law really strictly. <laughs> Sometimes it can get a little bit overboard. Signs everywhere telling you what not to do. Don't talk, don't smoke, don't bring durians, don't do stuff, don't sit down, don't put your backpack on you. <laughs> then you go like, oh my god, this is just too much. <laughs> But most times, I just feel, you know, okay, my personal choice was to leave here and I'm happy elsewhere. But I'm really glad my folks and most of my family is still here. They're safe here, they're sound, they're sheltered, they will be well taken care of.
All right. So, as I am currently in Singapore enjoying myself, <laughs> stuffing my face and spending time with friends and family, I hope you are somewhere out there in the world savoring great food and great company. You know, two of the pillars of a life well lived. Thank you so much for spending this Saturday with me. And I hope you enjoyed this little jaunt around Singapore. And I guess I will see you the same time next Saturday. You take care. Goodbye.